Trying to lose weight during menopause? Be careful, we wanna make sure that we're losing body fat and not muscle mass. In the previous episode, I laid out the foundational hormonal changes that cause all of this. So if you haven't watched the previous episode, go watch that now and then come back and join me in this episode. There's no question that people, men and women, gain weight as they age. One study followed women as they age from their 20s to their 50s. And over this 25 year period, on average, the women gained 25 extra pounds of body weight. Now, what was the cause of this weight gain, particularly this weight gain that occurred during a woman's midlife? Was it the simple aging process or did the menopause transition itself and the changing hormonal environment, did that have something to do with this midlife weight gain? That's the basis of a long held argument. There are two camps of people, and I'll just call it like a nerd fight. You have scientists that say, it's only because they're getting older that they're gaining weight. And then you have a few scientists like me would say, no, a large part of this excess weight gain is because of the menopause transition and the hormonal changes that are occurring specifically. And I've had conversations with fitness professional, physicians, and I'm telling you, people disagree about this. Well, I'm gonna give you a study, because remember, I bring the receipts. I'm gonna give you a study which clearly answers this question about the cause of weight gain or excess body fat gain during menopause. Now, this is one of the SWAN studies that we talked about earlier. Remember, SWAN was a massive longitudinal study that studied women as they age, and we get a lot of the best menopause research from this huge investigation. Now, the primary goal of this study was to determine the effects of the menopause transition on muscle mass and body fat. Now, notice I did not say body weight. There's one thing that I tell my university students when they're reading weight loss research, always look past body weight, pull back that curtain, peel that onion a little bit more and ask, what's happening to body fat and muscle mass. If we just look at body weight, that can often take us to an incorrect conclusion about what's happening in our body. Now, what did the researchers do in this study? Well, this was not a randomized controlled intervention study. They couldn't tell some women to stop aging and the other women to keep aging. So a randomized controlled study in that context wasn't possible. But this was called a longitudinal study where they tracked women for up to 15 years as they went through menopause. Now, importantly, these women were not asked to do anything special. In fact, they weren't given any diet. They weren't given an exercise program. The only thing they were required to do was track their menstrual cycles and get a DEXA scan every year. That's it. And what the researchers found over this period of time was that the menopause transition on average lasted about three and a half, I'm just gonna say four years, where they went from pre-menopause to post-menopause and the menopause transition period was about a four year period in between. What they observed during pre-menopause leading into the menopause transition is two things. The women were consistently gaining a little bit of lean mass during this time. So we gotta make it clear that th these changes aren't all good. So gaining a little bit of lean tissue, gaining a little bit more body fat each year. Then we get to the menopause transition. Right as they entered this phase, two things happened. For the first time, in the women's lives, they started to lose lean mass. Now it wasn't drastic, but it's a completely different trajectory. Now what about body fat? Well, what we see here, sadly, was an inflection point. Remember they were gaining body fat during this period, but now as soon as they entered the menopause transition, this rate of body fat gain became accelerated. So now they're gaining significantly more body fat every year during this transition phase. Now this loss of muscle mass and gain of body fat does not just have physique implications. There are also some pretty serious consequences to a woman's health as well. In particular, an increased risk of cardiovascular disease and osteoporosis. And by the way, that's just to name a few negative health outcomes. And this takes me back to our foundational principle for this entire series. Muscle equals health. 
excess body fat equals sickness. So we, we have to acknowledge the menopause transition is working against us on both fronts. Now, if that wasn't bad enough, sadly, the news gets a little bit worse. The menopause transition is also causing a shift in regional body fat deposition rather than a consistent overall gain in body fat mass. So let me give a little background. There are three areas of body fat. We have something called android, visceral, and gynoid body fat. Now android refers to the fat that accumulates primarily around the abdomen area in the upper body. And this is commonly referred to as an apple-shaped fat distribution. Now this includes both visceral and subcutaneous fat. Subcutaneous fat is the fat right underneath our skin and it's what I can pinch. And it's what people are thinking about when they say, hey, I would like to lose body fat. They're referring to subcutaneous body fat. The other type of fat in the abdomen area is called visceral fat. And this is the fat around the internal organs like the liver, pancreas, and intestines. Too much of visceral fat is not good. High levels of visceral fat increase the risks of cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and cancer. The last area of fat is called gynoid fat. Now this is a body fat distribution that's typically found in females and it's characterized by a higher concentration of fat in the hips and thighs. We see that during the menopause transition is that this patterning of increased body fat that is manifested in the abdominal region. So what's happening is we're getting an increase in android fat and this also includes visceral fat. Now let me just phrase this a different way. A woman's body shape is literally changing. She is gaining fat, but it's not equally distributed throughout her body. Less fat is being deposited in the lower body and more fat is being deposited in the upper body. And during the menopause transition, the rate of change around the android and visceral fat increases about six times more than the annual rate of gain in the gynoid area. Gynoid fat area increases about twofold. What can we do about this? Well, there's a couple things I wanna share with you now, and we're gonna break this down in more detail in future episodes. But the first thing I'd like you to, to appreciate is we wanna prioritize your health. So that means that you're gonna be thinking about exercise, the food that you're eating, and optimal sleep. Now in terms of exercise, we wanna make sure that resistance training is the foundation of your fitness program. But we don't wanna ignore aerobic fitness. We wanna make sure that we're aerobically fit as well. And I also advocate that we should be thinking about doing some speed and agility training as well. Now in terms of nutrition, focusing on whole foods, eliminating or reducing to a large extent processed foods, and I'll say trying to limit how many processed foods we eat. We're going to really dig into this later in this series, but a focus on the power of protein. Protein is going to be our best friend during this menopause transition. Also, sleep is extremely important. I'm gonna share some incredible research that's going to reinforce how important sleep is to helping our, or improving our body composition. And lastly, some women should consider hormone replacement therapy. Now we'll get into this later as well. If you have experienced changes in your own body shape, what things have you done that have worked well for you to combat this? Share what has worked for you in the section below. And Hone Health, thank you for making this possible.